It's another episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. Welcome. It's episode 385. I'm so thrilled to have you here today. We are talking about all sorts of things. We are chatting with Elizabeth Todd, who's a Jesus loving nutritional therapy practitioner and restorative wellness practitioner who lives with her husband of 26 years and their tiny dog, Sammy. Her four grown children are ages 19, 22, 23, and 24 and live either away at college or on their own. So she is also a brand new empty nester. As a former Air Force wife, she has lived all over the country but resides in Northern California currently. Before becoming an NTP, she was a homeschool mom for 19 years and worked in management and as a teacher in the community for their homeschool organization. Before that, she got a degree in speech pathology but had too many babies too soon to be able to actually use it. However, homeschooling four kids and having constantly traveling or deployed husband made life a little stressful. So when he retired after 20 years, things started to change drastically health wise. Over the course of six months without changing her diet or exercise, she gained 50 pounds despite having quote unquote normal labs. We're going to be talking about this today for sure. This led her to research the root of these issues where she discovered the nutritional therapy program. Now she's on a journey to heal herself and help as many others as she can along the way. So I really just wanted to have Elizabeth on to talk about her story. And I really, really enjoy these episodes because I find that we start to think about our lives and and maybe shift the way that we're seeing our struggles and Elizabeth has such a powerful story of her body just holding on to everything and as soon as it was safe to release just letting go and her health really took a dive and she wanted to come on the show to talk about trauma and processing and when it's time to look beyond the food so many of us I know for so so long I thought it's the macros it's the macros it's the macros and Elizabeth's experience was doing EMDR Uh, mine has been somatic experience and acupuncture and really understanding how to process things beyond the macros. Okay. We're talking about root causes. I also asked her if you could go back as a mom and how would you care for yourself differently? Would you change anything for women that are just pushing life to the limit? And how do we prioritize our health while also prioritizing our family? And I love asking that question because it's, it's not a simple answer. And I just love having others uh, wisdom pour down on us, right? So we shared a couple of links. I'll include them in the show notes today, which you can find uh, by accessing uh, ketodietpodcast.com and just look for episode 385 or click around on this page until you find the links. I'll include Elizabeth's website, which is naturallynourishedntp.com. She has an Instagram naturallynourishedntp. And you can also visit the nutritionaltherapy.com website for information on becoming a nutritional therapy practitioner. I love these humans. Um, We also talk about functional blood chemistry, a course that was absolutely pivotal in my practice. It's completely transformed the way that I approach clients and my one-on-one practice has completely shifted because of it. I can see all sorts of things in blood work. It's so incredibly cool. And this whole concept started when I met a man named Michael. And so Yeah, we talk about that a little bit. And if you want more information, I will include a link in the show notes on that. So let's cut over to today's episode. Welcome to the Keto Diet Podcast, the show all about keto for women so you can burn fat, balance your hormones, and heal your body. Starting and maintaining keto can be challenging without the right support. So just for listening to the podcast, I want to give you 20% off the keto beginning with the coupon code Keto Podcast. That's all one word. This 30-day program gives you a clear step-by-step how-to so you can quickly adapt to a ketogenic diet, avoid common struggles, and get the results you crave. Go to help healthfulpursuit.com slash begin to get your keto beginning discount today. If you're new around these 
Parts, I'm Leanne Vogel. You may know me as the international best-selling author of The Keto Diet, founder of HappyKetoBody.com, or maybe you know me as the nutritionist that likes dipping pork rinds in avocado oil mayo. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Thanks so much for listening. Hi, Elizabeth. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so good. Right before we press record, I'm like, I'm so glad we're having a conversation. I feel like I know you, but how did we meet before? What's going on? And we've actually met in real life at my Sacramento book tour. So this is just so cool that we get to chat actually. I know. I know. I, I was so starstruck when I met you. I'd, I I blubbered around a little bit and then I started crying. It was amazing. And <laughs> you, I mean, it was really, truly not just because of you and meeting you and, and nerves. It was really because the message that you had in your book really spoke to me. I felt like you were, you wrote it for me. Like you were talking to me about, you know, women that have struggled and tried all the things and nothing was working. And um, you're like, this is for you. And I'm like, it was really for me. <laughs> it was just such an emotional moment. My poor, sweet husband I was like, yeah, she does this. She cries. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's adorable. It's so great. And, you know, like I think back to writing the keto diet and how a big of a challenge it was. And I was so nervous for those book signings and I was sure that everything was going to flop and nobody was going to show up every time. And so many people showed up and it wasn't a flop and it was so great. I, I must've given more hugs during those months on tour than I probably have or will in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet. Yeah. We women are a huggy bunch. <laughs> we, we get emotional about our health and when you connect with us, we're all about it. Yeah, it's so true. And to be heard. And I know that that's something that I super, super craved and never really got that on my own of just like, there have to be people that are experiencing this like I am. And so to see everyone there kind of like, yes, me too. It's just, it's just such a great community. And I'm so thankful that we got to meet in real life. And here we are years later, having a conversation on the podcast. How does that even happen? This is crazy. I know, crazy. It's a total fangirl moment for me. I'll tell you. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, so cool. So I would love for you to just tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do and who you are. Okay. Well, I'm a brand new nutritional therapy practitioner. I just graduated in March from the NTA, which is the Nutritional Therapy Association. They have an online program. I started it last March. No, wait, I started last May, graduated this March, got my M's mixed up. And, you know, it's been really exciting for me because it was kind of the culmination of years of my own health journey that led me to make that decision to join. And now I'm, I'm starting to work with clients and I just finished another certification through Restorative Wellness Solutions to, you know, focus on gastrointestinal healing, you know, gut health kind of stuff. So I'm excited to, you know, take this new focus for my life and move forward and help other women that have had struggles like, like my own, but I have a pretty, you know, extensive like backstory that leads up to that. Would you want me to start talking about that or? Yes. I would love nothing more. (laughs) Awesome. Great. So to avoid sounding like, you know, in the beginning was the word and the word was gone. I'm going to start back in the beginning. Um, Basically my husband and I met, you know, in college back in the early nineties and I, I graduated from college to be a speech pathologist. That's what my degree's in. And my husband, he joined the air force. We got married shortly after it was uh, October of 1995. And then we had to move right away uh, to Oklahoma for our training. And, you know, it was our first year of marriage. We'd been married about nine months when I got pregnant with our first child and I was on birth control. So it was a complete shock. We were like, what in the world? We were supposed to be married five years before we had any kids. And, you know, I was supposed to get my master's in speech paths and do all this other stuff. You know, we had plans. I had her in March of 1997. And then we had to move to Texas where when she was five months old, I found out that I was pregnant with the second kid. And she was also a birth control baby. And I thought, okay, really, this thing is called birth control. There's clearly some problem here. It's not working. It's not controlling anything. So that was, I'm going to say that was a little bit stressful. It was exciting and crazy, but it was stressful. Babies are always great. And, but the thought of trying to not be pregnant and then get pregnant a second time within such a short time frame was hard. Uh, they were about 14 months apart. And then when my second was 10 months old, got pregnant with a third one on birth control. Yeah. God's got a really great sense of humor with me. 
Uh, and I thought, seriously, so at that point, we, I just threw it out the window. I'm like, I'm not using this stuff anymore. It's not working. I tried different kinds. It just clearly, it just doesn't work. So we'd moved a couple more times. And so when my son was born, we were stationed in Mississippi and I had a one-year-old and a two-year-old. And I thought, I can do this. You know, I can get these babies. I can do this thing. I'll get that master's degree. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Well, the master's degree didn't happen. We kept moving. And then I had a little bit of a break. And then I had my fourth child in October of 2002. And so at that point, I had a two-year-old, a four-year-old, and a five-year-old as well. And at that point, my five-year-old needed to start kindergarten. Well, the school system where we were in New Jersey wasn't that great. And we decided to try homeschooling for a bit. And I ended up homeschooling them uh, for 19 years. I homeschooled all four of them. That was never my plan. It was always to homeschool them for that particular assignment. Then I was going to put them in school and, you know, get the master's degree and go back to work. That was the plan. And then every time we moved, it would be in a situation where the kids needed me to be home with them because he was going to be gone or the school systems weren't great where we were and we couldn't afford the private school option. And it was just like, okay, I guess I'm doing this. It took me several years to kind of get on board with that, to be like in alignment with what clearly God has been telling me from day one, I was kind of in denial of the whole thing and kept pushing my own agenda saying just one more thing and I'll get to do what I want, right? That didn't happen. So eventually we had several moves. We ended up in Illinois in 2008 and 2009, he had a major deployment to Afghanistan. And that's really one of the crucial points in my timeline. That's when a lot of significant stressors happened during that deployment where I can see I took a turn in my health at that point. So that's kind of like where it all kind of began. Trace it back to there. Our, um, we had a house with a basement that was furnished. I had a couple of kids that lived downstairs. It got flooded. We had to rip up all the carpet, bust open all the walls, the big fans for months. Our dog died. One of my kids, you know, had a broken arm. Another kid busted their head open. At one point, all four of them got the stomach flu. And I remember there was one night I was standing in the hallway and they were like, it was like synchronized puking. I'm just standing there and one's in this bathroom throwing up, one's in this this bathroom, one's throwing up in the floor, one's, and I'm like, ah, you know, like what is happening? But that, you know, I just thought it was crazy. I just thought it was hard until my second child uh, got sick a few weeks after that, actually, with what we thought was strep throat. And um, I ended up taking her back to the doctor a week later saying, you know, she's not getting any better. I don't know what's going on. And I'd left my 12 year old at home babysitting the nine year old and the six year old because it's just going to be for a quick trip, like an hour maybe. And the doctor there, the pediatrician said, I'm sorry, you're going to have to go straight to the hospital. And so they called an ambulance and took my daughter and I straight from the clinic to Children's Hospital in St. Louis. And she almost died. She ended up after a week of tests and treatments, they gave her a diagnosis of juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. But for so many days, we didn't know what was happening. And I also couldn't reach my husband. I couldn't contact him. The way that I had to contact him was email and it took him a few days to get the message. It was just a very chaotic time, as you can imagine. You know, I had to farm my kids out to random people. But, you know, he ended up coming back home and I thought, OK, we're back together. She's better. We've got medication. We're, we're getting treatment. It's, it, things are going to get better. It's going to be all right. Well, I just didn't realize that it wasn't getting better. It was just I was learning how to endure stress and I was absorbing it really and kind of just putting my head down and pushing through everything that life was throwing. And I didn't really stop to take, you know, care of what was going on with me. Like I kind of ignored the things, that, the symptoms that started developing. I started, I, I wasn't sleeping. Um, and I thought that's just the way I was. Like maybe I only am supposed to get two or three hours of sleep a night. You know, that's what Martha Stewart does, right? It, people live off that. So I just felt like my kids need me. My husband needs me. I'll take care of me later. Well, that's, that was kind of dumb. I think, you know, it took me too much struggle and too much pain and too much drama to really realize that that was like the worst thing I could do. And I, I should have stopped and listened to what my body was telling me, but I didn't. So eventually we left Illinois. We moved to California, which is where we live now. He was deployed two more times. And then he eventually was able to retire in 2015 after 20 years. And that is the year that that's when my body said, OK, we can't compensate anymore. It stopped trying to make up for the lack that I had been giving it all these years. At the time, I was I thought 
got the picture of health. I would run, you know, three to five miles a day on the weekends, maybe go for a longer run. It sounds so crazy to say this out loud. But in the evenings, I would go to the gym and do this CrossFit type workout. I, I did a class there. And um, I mean, I was doing basically double workouts five, six days a week. I looked great. And I was probably only eating maybe 1200 calories, but they were good calories. They were clean. I didn't have processed foods. I didn't eat foods that had added sugar in them. I was pretty strict on what I ate. But then I started gaining weight and I thought, wait, I'm doing all this stuff. How can I possibly work out more and eat less? There's just no way I could add any more workouts into my day or eat any, you know, fewer calories. I started, my hair started falling out. I started passing these massive blood clots, like the size of baseballs. It was insane. Like I was in this debilitating pain. I had to rearrange work in the afternoon so that I could sleep. I couldn't make it through the day. I would be so exhausted to be like, I just need 10 minutes, 10 minutes. I'd have to set an alarm so that I could wake up and get back to work and do the other things. I'd had a, a life time of migraines, they had gotten worse. I was getting migraines every week uh, that would last two to three days. I hurt all over like body aches. I was popping Motrin like crazy. And I went to the doctor and they're like, oh, you're fine. You know, it's just, you're getting older, probably getting into menopause. It's just the way it is. And I thought, uh, what? This can't be right. That's crazy. I had a couple of weird markers. Like I had really high platelets. They were over a thousand. My ferritin and my iron were pretty severe. Like ferritin was like a six. When I was running and working out, I wore a heart rate monitor. My heart rate would shoot up to like 199 or 200. And I'd be like, that's weird. This Maybe the heart monitor is broken. Um, pretty much because I didn't have, you know, the hemoglobin, I guess, to transport the <laughs> oxygen around. I couldn't, like, my body's like, hi, we're, we're going to collapse if you don't stop this. So, you know, I'd end up gaining over about the period of six months around 50 pounds. And I hadn't changed my exercise or my diet. And if anything, I probably started, like, working out harder to try to compensate for that. But what I didn't know was that it was really stress that was creating this perfect storm that I had just been stuffing down and ignoring for all these years, you know, just pushing through all the things. At one point, I'd gone to my doctor. This is my primary care doctor. And I told him about my issues. I asked him if he would run a few labs for me. I had just read the book, Adrenal Thyroid Revolution by Dr. Rom. And he's like, yeah, you're fine. We don't need to run any of these labs. But are you sure you're not just, you know, hiding in your room and eating brownies? And I was like, what? I, I remember like sitting there like stunned. Like, did he just say that to me? And I was like, ha ha, no, ha ha. And then I remember leaving and getting in the car. And then I just started sobbing and I like, called my husband. I'm like, what do I do? I mean, I didn't even know what, like, what just happened? Like, are you serious? And that's the way it just, it felt for like the past, like the past, like five years, it was just constantly me being told that I needed to do more and that I wasn't doing enough. What I was doing wasn't effective or, you know, questioning if I was lying about what I was doing. Are you sure you're really doing all this work? Are you sure? And I mean, you just don't, you know, you don't know how to respond to something like that. If anything, it made me more like determined to work harder. And so I became like the penultimate rule follower. Like you tell me what to do and I will do it. And, and honestly, this is around the time when you started joining my little timeline. That's when I found out about your, your programs, your podcasts, your books. I joined your happy keto body program actually. And I remember following that going, this is it. I'm going to pay this money. And in whatever, six months or however long it was, I'm going to be back to normal again. It's going to fix me. This is it. This is it. It didn't, <laughs> you know, I was like, tell me what to do and I will do it. I will follow every rule, every program, everything at the gym. I followed every instruction. I drank every ounce of water. I measured every tablespoon. I measured every ounce and tablespoon of food for 833 days on my fitness pal, because it'll give you the streak on the app. It'll tell you how many days you've been. And I was like 833 days. And I didn't lose a single pound. It's wow. insane. I've been on an iron boosting kick. About six months ago, I discovered my iron levels were dangerously low. Why? Well, because I like plants and I eat a lot of plants on my ketogenic diet. And when you do not combine vitamin C with plant-based iron foods, the iron cannot be absorbed. Now, vitamin C-based foods are kind of lacking in the ketogenic diet. It's not impossible to get enough, but it is a challenge. So I started supplementing with Paleo Valley Essential C, and in just three short months, I doubled my iron level. Extreme fatigue, weakness, fluttering heartbeat or shortness of breath, headache, dizziness or lightheadedness, cold hands and feet, inflammation of the tongue, brittle nails. These are all symptoms of low iron, and I had all of them. Sitting on the lower end of normal iron 
iron levels can deliver some of these symptoms. And it's very unpleasant, let me tell you. Coupled with the immune boosting component of vitamin C, you really can't go wrong with this one-two punch in your ketogenic diet. And why Paleo Valley Essential C? It's third-party lab tested as the most powerful 100% natural vitamin C product on the market today. It contains not one, but three of the most concentrated natural sources of vitamin C. Amla berry, camu camu berry, and unripe aceola cherry, the most potent source of natural vitamin C on earth, which is 120 times higher than that found in an orange. Each nutrient-packed serving delivers 750% your RDI of vitamin C, an amount meant to help you thrive, not just survive. Most other vitamin C supplements are derived from GMO corn and only contain one fraction of the vitamin, ascorbic acid. Paleo Valley Essential C Complex contains the entire spectrum with absolutely no synthetic vitamin C, just organic superfoods. Makes a huge difference. Head on over to Paleo Valley. Dot com load up grab a couple of bottles of vitamin c complex whatever else that catches your eye the superfood bars are amazing if you need a recommendation then enter the code keto at checkout to receive 15 percent off your first order again that's paleovalley.com and the code keto for 15 percent off your first order at what point did you feel like maybe the food isn't the problem? Then that day I, yeah. I deleted the app and said no more. I believed what I had read in those books. I believed what I'd read in the adrenal thyroid revolution. I knew there was something going on. I believed what I'd learned in the, the happy keto body program. I really did. I tried. I tried everything, intermittent fasting, intermittent fasting and keto. If I had a dollar for every time somebody says, oh, you should just try keto, I'd be so, so loaded. It just, it didn't work for me. It didn't work for me. And it took getting through all this nutritional therapy education for me to realize that there's more going on. Like I had no idea back then that I wasn't breaking down fat properly. I didn't know that until I studied my own program to, you know, study gut health and, and learned how to administer a GI map to read the markers. And you, if your body can't break down fat, then you're not going to be able to absorb it and assimilate. It's not going to do what you want to do. And it just gets stored. If you've got, you know, wonky blood markers, you might have parasites that are actually helping you by getting encapsulated in fat. You know, when you gain weight, it's really your body's trying to protect you from something. And I wasn't questioning what it was protecting me from. I was just trying to get rid of it. That, that was my only goal. It was crazy, but eventually I had to learn to change my indicators of success. So I did find a couple of people to work with me and to help me along the way. I stopped seeing that horrible primary care doctor. I did find a naturopath and she helped with some things. I started sleeping better. I didn't have migraines anymore. She did a, a food sensitivity test for me. She ran a lot of labs, gave me a lot of supplements, but it was really me kind of guiding her. It was me saying, well, do you think maybe there's something going on with my thyroid? She'd be like, sure, take this thyroid medication. Or, you know, do you think maybe I've got something going on in my gut? Like I, I, it's not absorbing things properly. She's like, maybe here, take this, you know, protocol. And she'd hand me $500 worth of powders or whatever. But it was not so much root cause focused. She wasn't even, even she wasn't asking the questions that I was asking her. I was begging like, well, what about this? What about this? It seemed like I was the only one that was noticing that there was something still wrong and that band-aids weren't fixing it. Like, hi, does anybody see me? Does anybody hear me? No one. It was like radio silence. And it was just me and the internet trying to figure everything out. Um, that's when I um, decided that I was going to take charge of my own health. And that's when I joined the nutritional therapy program to say, okay, I'm going to get to the root cause of this and start answering some of my own questions. Completely. Oh my goodness. There's so many questions that I have for you. Okay. You mentioned the indicators of success that you had to shift those. From what I understand, your previous indicator of success was your weight. What is your indicator of success now? Oh, that's great. Yeah. I remember thinking like a feeling like a failure, you know, cause I still wasn't losing weight and I was literally following every rule and every instruction. I thought what in the world, but then I realized, you know what? I, my heart rate doesn't go up to 200 anymore. I sleep at night. Like I get tired at night. It used to be that wired and tired bit where I would go to bed and my mind would be like, Oh, let's, let's figure everything out from the last 12 years. Let's think about that right now. Remember that conversation you had, you know, eight years ago with that person? Let's, let's think about that. 
So I stopped doing that. I stopped, you know, struggling to fall asleep. I was able to stay asleep. That was amazing. Like I, there were nights when I would wake up in the same position and I thought, wow, what? that's cool. This is what normal people do. That's awesome. I didn't know. My anxiety went way down. I wasn't struggling with that. I grew back the hair that I had lost. Not only did I stop, you know, passing those massive blood clots, my periods got almost minimal, like no PMS, no symptoms prior. Like it would just show up every 28 days and I'd be like, oh, it's here. You know, there was no like headache or our tenderness or cramping or our mood swings leading a few days up. So, so many things had improved. My energy levels had improved. You know, I didn't hurt all over that. I had to stop beating myself up about weight loss and focus on the victories where I could find them. And when I let that go, when I finally just let it go and said, okay, maybe I'm just going to look like this for a little while. Then it just like this huge boulder rolled off my back. And I was like, oh gosh. And it was so amazing to be free of that. Like it was, I was just so driven and focused on that for so long as I think many women are in our culture, right? I think, I feel like so many women struggle with their self-image and their weight and the comparison beast where we're always looking at what everybody else looks like and, you know, and what to wear and what to do. And when I could be free of that, yeah, it was a good day that day. It was a good day when I realized that. Completely. And something you said, maybe I'm going to look like this for a while. Oh, when you're working on root cause stuff, and especially when your body is reacting with weight gain, that is so hard. And many people don't get there. And they're like, I will just keep trying. I will just keep with the food things. I mean, you said, was it 800 and 33 days of, yeah. of vlogs. Yeah. Like, like it took you 833 days to kind of be like, Oh wait, yeah, no, like this isn't working. You know what I mean? Like when you look back on that, you're like, how ridiculous is that? And it was the same for me. I'm just like, I keep pushing and I keep going lower and lower in carb and I keep adding the carb ups and the things and the food and the workouts and the, maybe if I just get the macros right. And I just kept gaining a little bit, gaining a little bit. And my anxiety was getting worse and my exhaustion was getting worse. And finally I was like, I'm going to have to be like this for a while. I need to figure out what's going on. Sure enough, it was mold and parasites. So looking back, kind of, I guess my next question, what do you believe that your root causes were? Like, did you determine kind of what those root causes were? I know stress was a huge bit. Like in 2015, you said like your body just stopped working. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> um, and is. that's not uncommon when finally you get this release and things are going okay. The body's like, okay, yep. I'm done. I can't hold this anymore. I'm out. I know that that was kind of a, a big one for you. Were there other things going on? Do you mean were there other things going on at like that moment? Like root cause I, wise, um, oh, root cause you wise, know, with yeah. the digestion you mentioned, right. with fat digestion, anything else that you've noticed just looking back of like, oh yeah, no, that was definitely not normal. Actually, I didn't even put two and two together until this past year when I started learning that there was another way to go about it. For so long, I had been looking at my health as traditional doctors would do, like in terms of Band-Aids. You just need to do this one thing. It was a symptom of treatment. I'd be like, this is happening. I need to fix this. This is happening. I need to fix that. And it wasn't until I started looking and learning, looking into the nutrition and health foundationally and functionally and learning what that meant that I started realizing, oh, yeah, you know. Stress and trauma, yeah, that's a huge piece. I started doing EMDR therapy. Man, did that unravel some things. Whew, that was a doozy. But I started realizing just simple digestion practices. Like I didn't realize it wasn't normal to, you know, only go potty or go poop once a week. I thought that was fine every few days. You're supposed to go every day. You know, I didn't, I didn't realize, like I thought everybody felt kind of weird after they ate certain food, like they felt, you know, uncomfortable or had gas or whatever. So I had some digestive symptoms, but truly I just gotten so acclimated to them that I didn't realize that they, that was my body trying to tell me that something was wrong. I didn't realize that the, the insomnia and the other things were, and the, my, and the headaches were my body trying to say, Hey, we've got some inflammation. There's something going on. I didn't realize that me eating, you know, and counting every macro and measuring everything was, you know, really exacerbating the, the stress and the anxiety, but the things I was choosing, it didn't matter. You know, if you can eat like solid gold, everything can be absolutely perfect, but if you can't digest it and then absorb it and assimilate it and let it get it to where it needs to go, then it doesn't matter. Like it didn't matter that I was eating this great diet. My body was like, yeah, we, we can't do anything with that. Like <laughs> what, what does this mean? 
you know, and the stress though, goodness, it depleted so many nutrients across the board for me, just burned through them that I was so deficient. And again, no doctor had ever bothered to address. I remember getting my own uh, blood panels back just a few months ago and looking at them functionally. And I was like, why has no one ever asked me about parasites? My ferritin is so low and my eosinophils were a four. And I thought, and basophils were high, monocytes were high. Why is no one asking me these questions? Why am I the one having to like find the puzzle pieces and put them together? You know, and I wasn't even qualified at that time. I was like, I'm just paying attention and listening. I'm like, hi, I've, I, th- these things, hello, things happening, someone. And so I thought, okay, well, I guess I'm getting certified in that too. All right. This sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so much like uh, myself too. It's like, I remember getting my first mycotoxin test probably about a year and a half ago now. And I just looked at it like, I have no idea what this says. I think it's probably bad, but I don't know. So I better get on it. Like, I had no idea what right. I was looking at. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. I just, I mean, I can't sit around and wait for somebody to figure this out for me because I've tried everywhere and no one's helping me. I did get some good help and I don't want to be disrespectful to the services that I was provided. You know, I was able and, and I was fortunate and blessed to be able to go to see those providers. And, you know, I'm fortunate that my husband has a job and that we were able to pay out of pocket for all those practitioner fees and all those labs and all those supplements. I mean, I've spent thousands of dollars in the past few years just trying to figure out what was wrong. So I'm grateful for the journey because it brought me to where I am today. And I wouldn't know what I know now and I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now had I not gone through all that. So I'm grateful and it was hard, but there's still good to be found in the midst of it. I know I try my best when it comes to nutrient density in my diet, but some days I totally miss the mark. And those are usually the days where things are hectic, stress is at an all-time high, and the last priority on my to-do list is caring for my body. Oof. Enter Organifi Red Juice. It's a keto-friendly superfood berry blend, a potent mixture of adaptogens, antioxidants, and a clinical dose of cordyceps for an energy boost without the caffeine. So let me tell you, as somebody who is very sensitive to caffeine, relying on cordyceps for energy has been a total game changer for me. Organifi Red Juice is a powdered mix that you add to water to boost energy, reduce oxidation, like think inflammation. And did I mention that you just add it to water? Ingredients include beets to clear toxins, berries for antioxidants, including vitamin C, cordyceps for a boost in energy, ginseng for mental alertness, reishi for a grounding energy, rhodiola for an increase in focus. It's my 2 p.m. I need a push through the day, but I haven't had enough plants today drink, which happens more often than not. Go to Organifi.com slash KDP and use the coupon code KDP for 20% off your order. Again, that's Organifi, O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I dot com slash K-D-P and use the code K-D-P at checkout for 20% off your entire order. It's so true. And you mentioned EMDR. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because that sounds like that was one of the things that worked. And can you tell us a little bit more about, about that for people that might not know what it is? Sure. So that's a great question. I actually got the idea from one of the sessions in the Happy Keto Body Program. It was with the doctor. I don't remember her name right now. But Dr. It was Nina. Session. Yes. She was talking about stress and different ways to deal with it. And I thought, you know, I bet there's something there. Maybe this is what's what blocking me. Maybe this is why I can't lose weight. Yeah, that's it. So um, <laughs> I had actually started going to counseling to kind of help with some other things. I just because this was the, you know, the season of me, I'd finally decided I'm going to start taking care of me now. And I was seeing a counselor and I found out that she could provide this treatment called EMDR. And I, if I remember it correctly, it's eye movement desensitization. I think it's rehabilitation is what the R is. And it's a series of movements and patterns that you track visually that they're trained to do to help you unlock trauma. So for me, what it looked like was she would have me focus on a memory and on the, the things surrounding it. And then she would start with rating it on a scale of one to 10 of how upsetting it was emotionally for me. And then she would have me go through these movements. I would track these movements 
that she would do, like she might have her hand go back and forth or she might tap, you know, left, right, left, right, several different things she would try. And then we'd process that. And then she'd ask me, how do you feel about it now? And it took several months and several sessions. But I'll tell you the one domino that I was able to uncover that knocked down everything for me was that I realized during one of these sessions, it it came to me clear as a a bell. It was just like, it's not your fault it's not your fault. And I mean, your adult brain knows that it's not your fault, but for whatever reason, a younger brain, your, your child brain or a young adult brain kind of doesn't process things that way. So when things happen to you today and you get really upset about something that seems relatively benign, it's usually because it's connected in some way to some kind of event or trauma or trouble in your past. And that's why they use that term triggered. It triggers that flood of emotion. And it's, it it almost transports you back to that moment in time when you were a kid and you were helpless, you couldn't do anything about it. Or maybe it was when you were an adult and you had no control over the situation. But for me to process through some of these things and to realize that it wasn't my fault, I was like, okay, we're done here. I'm good. I'm good. (laughs) I got it. Like it just unraveled everything for me. It, It was the domino that literally knocked everything else down. And I thought, well, now that I, you know, I mean, see, it's so hard to explain because you know that it's not your fault. Like my brain today knows it's not my fault. But for whatever reason, when these stressors would pop up, I would just feel trapped and I, I, I was powerless to overcome them, whatever it was. And then I realized that I have power to do that. It's okay. That This is separate from me. This doesn't define me. And I have the tools that I need now to work through it properly. And it doesn't have any control over me anymore. It doesn't have a voice in my head. It doesn't have a vote in the choices I make in my life. It doesn't even have a view to what I'm doing. It, I'm able to remove it. And it's so amazing to, to be able to be free of some of that. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't have things that still bother me or worry me, but they don't bother me as much. And I'm able to respond more quickly and appropriately to them so that I don't have those spirals down into anxiety and um, or depression or, you know, just the fear that they can un- open up. So it was huge for me. Huge. Yeah. Another, another piece that it sounds like was huge for you is trying to figure out what was wrong. And what I mean by that is I think a lot of people expect that if they just like what you've been saying for our time together is like, I just, if I could just find that one thing, then everything would be fine. And I think the same thing goes with root cause pieces. You know, I was just having a conversation on another podcast episode that's going live around this time about just because a test says that it's negative doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have XYZ. It could be that your drainage pathways are not open and we're seeing issues there. And so if all signs point to mold, but you test negative for mold, it's probably mold. It's just there's some (laughs) issues, you know? So like, I think even the trying to figure out what's wrong thing and having patience around that and knowing that it's going to cost time, energy and money sounds like that was another valuable piece to the puzzle for you. Yeah, it was. I was very driven by finding a solution. I was also, you know, concerned about the length of time and the cost and all that. And I was trying to find the most effective path forward. But it was really once I stopped and sat down and said, okay, let's take stock of what's really going on. And part of that EMDR for me was getting to the root of stress and why I respond in such a stressed manner to events that shouldn't necessarily stress me out. Now things will happen and I'm like, whatever, it doesn't even bother me. Whereas like the old me five, 10 years ago would have lost her mind and, you know, been sitting in the corner rocking. But now it's just, I just roll with it. And I'm so glad that I was able to unlock that as a root cause. You know, you had asked about maybe other types of root causes. I have been able to determine that through labs that I've run and evaluated myself, some of them with the help of other practitioners, that I do have some extensive, you know, some compromised digestive function. I've got some lots of inflammation that we're working through, a little bit of microbiome insufficiency, like I have to replenish good bacteria that have been depleted over time. There are things that I know that are causing problems further up the chain that I'm dealing with. And it's, it gives me like hope to know that there's a path forward. Like I can finally see, it's like when, you know, you see like a, a chasm over, you know, a, a canyon and there's an invisible bridge and you step your foot out, like, is there going to, something going to catch me? And then the, the little square lights up and then you step in again, I'm starting to see the squares like up in front of me and I can see that there's steps that I can take forward to get through this. So it makes me feel pretty good. And again, grateful because it brought me here. Completely. And a question that I wanted to ask 
if you could go back as a mom, like caring for yourself, caring for your family, like once 2015 hit, it's sort of like your body just, oh, I can't even handle it anymore. I know we can't go back, but what I'm really wanting to ask this question is for young moms who feel like they're probably headed in that direction, but they just don't have the time, energy, money because they're caring for their family and it's just total chaos. Are there certain things that you wish that you would have done or that maybe you think other moms could do when they have little ones and there's pure chaos? Oh, absolutely. Um, I know that finances are a big piece to this puzzle, but if you've got the means to get help, get some help. It's okay. You don't have to be super mom and do everything. Uh, I felt that because I wasn't working out of the home, I did work from home for several years, but because I wasn't working as a speech pathologist and I was homeschooling, I felt like, okay, well, this is my job. I can't ask for help. I didn't necessarily always have my husband around to help. I didn't have family around to help, but asking for help does not mean that you're failing. It's okay. If you can hire someone to help to come in and take some of the burden off, give you a break, do that. If you can't do child swap, you know, child care swaps with other families. Beyond that, I would say that there's things that, that really aren't as important as you think they are. There's things that you can let go. There's things that you, you don't have to have everything done every day. You don't, it, it, even if you're homeschooling, there's subjects that you can just focus on important pieces of it each day and let other things roll off to another day, you know, taper down some of the load so that it's doable for your kid that's struggling. Take some of the burden off your plate. Say no to some things. Don't say yes to everything. I'm a big helper type person. So if people would come to me for help, I'd be like, sure, absolutely. What do you need? And it came at my own expense. Now that might be an asset for me as a practitioner, but as a mom, I was like, I need to focus here. My kids need me. My husband needs me. But I was just running 11 directions, burning the candle from both ends, striving to reach this ideal that was not really attainable. It wasn't, it wasn't even worth it, really. I didn't attain it. I didn't come, come close. So I think saying no to some things, restructuring your priorities, letting some things go and asking for help are huge pieces to that. And be, be creative. I know that you know finances can be a big issue there. They were for us. I just didn't go out to eat for several years so that I could pay to have someone help me around the house. And that's fine. I just made my choices. I just spent my money differently. You know, maybe give up Starbucks if you can. <laughs> Try that. All of a sudden you have like $300 a month. <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. I had, I cleared a few hundred dollars right away when we stopped going out to eat and stopped going to Starbucks. It was mind blowing. We had a pretty tight budget, but yeah, you'd be amazed if you just pay attention to where those dollars are going. You can, you can spend money where you need to. You can, you can find ways. There's ways to switch things around. I really hope you're enjoying today's episode. I'd love to see where you're listening from. You can snap a pic and tag me at Leanne Vogel or leave a review for the show on your favorite podcast player. It helps me out tremendously. Okay, back to the good stuff. Completely. There's actually some really good apps now too, that you can track all the things and organize stuff. And I've had a bunch of friends tell me that it's phenomenal. Like it's really helped them with the, all the technology now. Um, it can work for you or against you, but I've had that. Okay. So you just graduated. What are your goals? What are you thinking? Like, how are you building up your clients? I'm so curious. I know. I'm actually really brand new at it. I had to, I'm great at the nutrition piece. Like I could talk to you all day about all the things and all the words, and I can even like explain it, not just use the big, you know, nutrition words because I love it so much, but the business part. Yeah. Mm, not my thing. So my sweet husband helps me with some of that stuff. I did hire a business coach to help me figure out how to do things on Instagram and bless my heart. I got on stories this week and talked with my face on the camera. And I'm like, you don't even know how hard that is for me. I'm all about typing words, but me with my face, I don't, I don't know if I want to do that. So I'm trying to grow a business that way. It's not ideal, but ultimately I also got that restorative wellness certification as the gut health practitioner. Super excited about that. Finishing up blood chemistry as well. I'm actually probably going to do that again and do a different program. Um, I think you had even recommended one to me, uh, the function of, uh, for Michael Rutherford. Blood yeah. chemistry. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. I'm going to include a link in the show notes because like awesome. everybody, anyone who's a practitioner 
who knows the basics of nutrition, I am telling you right now, it completely transforms your practice. Like, Oh my gosh. Yes. Like it's incredible. It's incredible. (laughs) Well, I'm currently doing Emily Morrow's course, uh, the master blood chem with M and I just have like one more module to finish that up, but I'm probably going to do a second one just because I want to know more and I want to hear it in a different perspective. So I'm always wanting to learn and to grow and to do more, but I am, you know, working with some clients one-on-one right now. I have a group program that I launched in the beginning of May. That's a four week program. It's like weekly videos and a weekly zoom call where they get to ask me questions and stuff. So it's a slow start. It's going slowly, but that's okay. Cause I think that I need it to go slowly simply because I'm not that great at the business part you know, take one thing at a time and go from there. But I'm excited about, you know, moving forward from this and working with clients that the next big thing I want to learn is uh, I want to address hormones and get really deep down and dirty with those things. I love that you said that it's a slow start and you already have a digital program you're selling on the internet. That's <laughs> not a slow start at all. <laughs> I know, I know. It's a slow start for me. I just don't, I, I think I think differently than other people. I'm like, why? Doesn't everybody do that? My husband's like, no, not everybody does the things that you're doing. They don't do three things at once or five things at once. I don't know how to not be like this. So, I mean, you heard my story, right? I've done a lot of things. I mean, I had like all these kids and all this. I don't know how to be still. I don't know how to do that. (laughs) (laughs) That's incredible. That is so cool. It's such good wisdom to just take it one step at a time. That's something that my husband was so good with being like, Leanne, you don't need to have a podcast and a YouTube channel and a book and 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 it's focus on one thing and do it really well and i go back to that over and over and over like you just focus on the one thing and so that's really exciting oh already you just have so much knowledge and passion and i think that's what makes a great practitioner is just somebody who's been in the trenches and has that passion and wants to help other people because they experienced whatever it is and you end up attracting the exact clients that you know how to help because you've experienced it and it's what you're passionate about. And that's such a great, such a beautiful relationship you get to have with these individuals and walking with them and listening to them. Unlike that doctor that said what they said to you, um, yeah, the you know, just really listening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I think it's huge for me. I know that I needed somebody to listen to what I was saying, but also and, and to have buy-in, you know, it's important to me that I understand what it is you're telling me to do that. I, and that I'm willing to walk with you through that. Don't just hand me $500 worth of supplements and say, peace out. Don't tell me what to do. Invite me to do it with you. And that's a huge part of who I'm trying to be as a practitioner. I'm going to, I want to listen to your story. I want to help you find those root causes and then work together with you to, you know, find a plan that's going to work for you. It's not going to make sense for me to tell you to take 15 pills if you don't like to swallow two, you know? So I want to make sure that they understand and that I, that was important to me. So I'm basically looking for me. I'm going to help all the me's out there. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. And you can tell very quickly. It's like, "Mm, you're not really like, we're not similar. This is probably not going to work, you know, (laughs) because it really needs to be. Yeah, it's such a gift. It's so interesting. When I started nutrition, kind of where you're at now, I met with clients for probably three months and hated it so much. I hate I hated it so much. And I stopped working with clients and I only just started recently again. And it is incredible. I don't know why I just like this. It's my favorite thing. I love it so much getting to know somebody so deeply and ask questions and their willingness and their just like drive to want to feel better. And oh, it's just the best job. Yeah, it is. It's awesome. (laughs) Well, you're amazing at what you do. I can tell you that from my perspective, I've been blown away by the truth bombs and the knowledge that you drop regularly. So it's been huge for me too. Thanks, Elizabeth. That's wonderful. I just love, I just love that we got to have this conversation. Where can people find more from you and connect with you and all the places? Right. So I'm, I'm on Instagram and I'm at naturally nourished NTP. And I have a website that is www naturallynourishedntp.com. So that's where I'm at. That's awesome. I will include uh, the links in today's show notes. If you guys can't find the places, just go to your app and click around until you find the show notes and everything will be there for Elizabeth. And if you're not sure where the show notes are, just 
just go to ketodietpodcast.com and look for the show notes for episode 385 on that page if you can't find what you're looking for. So Elizabeth, again, wow, so great that we got to do this. This was such a blast. I loved learning more about you. And thank you for sharing your story on the Keto Diet Podcast. Yay, thank you so much for having me. It was such an awesome opportunity to get to do this and to get to chat with you. I hope you really enjoyed today's episode. Go ahead and follow Elizabeth at Naturally Nourished NTP. And again, I will include the link in today's episode for Michael's class, the functional blood chemistry course that we were talking about a couple times in today's episode and the keto diet book I think we talked about too. So go on over to the show notes and you'll find all of that there. Okay, see you here next Tuesday for another episode of the Keto Diet Podcast. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. Music for the Keto Diet Podcast provided by Yechi. Follow Jacob on Instagram at Yechi underscore official and on Spotify as Yechi. That's Y-E-C-H-I. The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.